to my first look at the Christopher Columbus, a legendary tier Italian battleship. It is one of the latest additions to the Bureau with the rest of the Triple Threat Bureau projects, and I'll leave a link to my video about that down below. But the ship boasts 16 15-inch main battery guns, pretty decent secondary armaments, as well as a smoke charge. So the ship can be set up either for secondaries or accuracy. So we will check out the upgrades first and then check out the commander options. So as far as the upgrades go, first upgrade slot is secondary battery mod two, which increases the range of the secondaries and its dispersion by 20%. Then we've selected propulsion mod two, time taken to reach full power is cut in half, and then we went with the Concealment System Mod 1. Detectability range is improved by 10%, and the incoming fire dispersion is improved by 5%, and that doubles up on your fully upgraded camo or skin. Then the last upgrade slot, we have Secondary Battery Mod 3, which improves the Secondary Battery Reload Time, and this is the same setup regardless of the Commander. So let's go back and check the commander here. If you want to do a secondary build, here is Paulo de Ravel. Time is of the essence, which improves the battleship main battery reload time. And then I went with Franz von Hipper to improve the secondary gun range and shell grouping. And then Haruna here for uh, improvement of secondary gun range and dispersion. This is my secondary build for all the Italian battleships. Not the one for nuisance is the first skill. Risk of catching fire is improved by 8%, as is the risk of flooding and torpedo damage. And I did not select Brawler because I don't want to take a hit on the main battery gun range. Here we went with Porcupine, which really helps out the secondaries with the improvement to the gun range, shell grouping, and dispersion. Then we went with Firefighter, for the third skill, damage control party cooldown time and risk of catching fire is improved, but the duration is cut down by 40% here uh, when this is maxed out. Properly meticulous is the last skill here, which improves the secondary battery reload time and its enhanced secondary targeting duration. Then when here we went with will to rebuild, amount of HP recovered is 73% at legendary rank three. Their duration is 40%. So when you go up to Legendary Rank 4, the amount of HP recovered goes up. The duration goes down, but that is uh, pretty much compensated for by the amount of HP that you uh, recover. And the special effect is the auto repair when the HP is equal to or less than 20%. And to make that happen here at Legendary Rank 3, you have to be within two and three quarter kilometers of an allied ship. Uh, if you go up to legendary rank four, that goes up to three and a half percent. So here with Ravel uh, set up here, let's check out the secondaries. That's really the main deal here. And secondary firing range goes up to 10.2 kilometers with a reload time of 4.3 seconds. And let's check out the main batteries. Firing range is 17.3 kilometers, reloads every 31 seconds, and you can check out the rest of the numbers there. So uh, the guy that I really went with primarily was Iachino. I tried a bunch of matches with Ravel, and Iachino seemed to give the better performance, to be honest with you. And his base trait is Go Away which approves your battleship main battery shell grouping when shooting at battleships, cruisers, or destroyers. And you can see the percentages change depending on which ship you're targeting. You have the greatest accuracy here when you're targeting cruisers. Inspirations are Andrew Cunningham for Concentrated Devastation, which approves the main battery shell grouping. And then we have Robert Jujard for Bore, which improves the battleship's armor-piercing shell penetration multiplier. And then here, this is a total accuracy setup with flammable cannon air. Battleship main battery range is improved, as is the shell grouping, but you do increase the risk of catching fire. Gyrating drill bits is next, which improves the battleship gun traverse speed and main gun armor piercing shell damage, but that is at the cost of the maximum speed of the battleship. Then here we went with marksmanship, 
which improves the main battery dispersion, but it cuts down the rudder shift time. And then finally, we went with Reaching Out XXL, which improves the main battery range. And for the legendary skill, I was trying something new. Instead of the standard Wildery build, I went with Testudo, which improves the incoming damage from shells, torpedoes, and bombs to your battleship while the repair party is active. And you get one extra repair party charge. So, uh, yeah, I believe if you go up to legendary rank three, you'll get another repair party charge. I think. I'm not 100% sure. And uh, you will... Uh, have the incoming damage from shells, torpedoes, and bombs go up to 16.7 and 20% when, um, or it's reduced by 20% when you max out at legendary rank 4. And that is my setup for both the commanders. We already checked out the upgrades. Let's check out the loadout here, high explosive and armor piercing shells, which we will get into in a bit. Consumables, you have your damage control party which uh, has a duration of 15 seconds, reloads every 80 seconds, and there's an unlimited number of those consumables. Next is the Repair Party Consumable, which will partially restore the ship's HP by repairing any light damage at the rate of 414 hit points per second. Duration is 28 seconds with a reload time of 80 seconds, and there are five of those consumables. Then we went with the Exhaust Smoke Generator Consumable. Duration is 45 seconds. Dispersion time is 10 seconds, and it reloads every 150 seconds, and you have three of those consumables. And then the enhanced secondary targeting is next. You could select that or the spotter or fighter plane. We went with the enhanced secondary targeting. Secondary battery shell grouping is approved by 100% when the consumable is running. Dispersion is improved by 50%. Duration is 30 seconds with a reload time of 160 seconds and there are three of those consumables. Don't have any boosters going here but that could change depending on the match. And the ship does not come with any camo so I created uh, Regia Marina Premium Permanent Camouflage from the disposable Regia Marina camo. Sea detectability and incoming fire dispersion is four and a half percent respectively. So then the specs, survivability hit points is 83,000. Armor is 19 to 406 millimeter. You have a 31% torpedo damage reduction here with this armor. Artillery, you have 16 381 millimeter, 15 inch main guns. They reach out to 19.2 kilometers here with this setup and compare that to Ravel at 17.3. Reload time is 33.5 seconds, so reload time is a little longer than with Ravel. Traverse time is 29 seconds. HE shells have a maximum of 5,400 with a 24% chance of setting fire. Our piercing shells are 12,100. So then the secondaries here, uh, both types of guns are semi-armor piercing. They both have a range of 7.8 kilometers and reload time is either 4.8 or 6.8 seconds, and the damage of the semi-armor piercings is either 2,000 or 3,800, depending on the gun, and you will still uh, get a pretty effective secondary show here if you get within range. And the AA defenses here rated at 83, and as is typical with a lot of other Italian battleships, you will pretty much clear the sky if you get in a match with an overly aggressive aircraft carrier player. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 26.6 knots. Turning circle radius is almost one kilometer. Rudder shift time is right around 90 seconds. Concealment, detectability range by sea is 13.6 kilometers. Range by air is 11.4 kilometers. And if you're firing in a smoke, your uh, range, detectability range is still 10.9 kilometers. And the armor, okay, this looks like uh, Typical, like Venorio, Vittorio Veneto and Roma, or even Giuseppe Verdi or Lepanto. Let's check out the Citadel. And yeah, the edge of the turtleback is kind of green. So as with any of the ships in the game, you really do not want to go broadside. And let's see here what's in the front and the top is... 
30, yeah, really isn't uh, that much of a citadel, except for that little area right in the front, and I assume in the back right there. So basically, you want to keep angled and go broadside only when you think you can get the most out of your um, full salvos, really. Overview, guns are plenty. A high number of guns allow for a lot of damage from a single salvo. And yeah, 16 guns do dish out quite the damage, as you're going to see in the highlight. Full circle, main battery turrets can rotate the full 360 degrees. And this is awesome. I do want to point this out in the highlight part of the video. It really does help the guns get around to either side of the ship a lot quicker. And then the ship does have an exhaust smoke generator, so it does have rolling smoke, and you can stay in the smoke while you're going at full speed, but remember your concealment is 10.9 kilometers. So then the Christopher Columbus was a large battleship that embodies the Italian shipbuilding achievements of the early 1940s. The ship is armed with 16 15-inch 381-millimeter main guns and a strong secondary battery. Year of design was 1945, and there were no ships in the series. Well, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and check out some highlights. All right, we're in land of fire. And we're going to check out the teams here. A couple destroyers per side and looks like four cruisers and three battleships. So, yeah, in order to unlock the Christopher Columbus, you need to have specific ships in your port from the Italian Tech Tree line in order to progress through certain segments of the Bureau Project. Those ships are the Carcilio, Tier 6 Carcilio, Vittorio Veneto, and the Lepanto. So, without those ships in your port, you have to win a match in either standard or AI, you will not be able to complete the Bureau. So you want to keep that in mind when you're starting the Bureau. And that restriction does make sense because that will pretty much let you have the experience that you need in order to go up to the legendary rank with the Christopher Columbus here. So yeah, the Italian battleships have recently made a big splash in the secondary world of World of Warships Legends. And the Lepanto was definitely overwhelming uh, with its secondary armaments, and it was recently nerfed. But the ship is still kind of outstanding, and the Gasape Verdi, the recent campaign ship, was also a pretty big-time secondary monster, Tier 8 Gasape Verdi. And so now here we have the Christopher Columbus, which... In some ways, it's free if you go through the Bureau Project, but you still do have to kind of pay a little bit to get those tech tree ships. So, yeah, uh, the ship is set up, as we saw, with a hybrid secondary mode where we have the hybrid upgrade options for the upgrade slots number one and number four. And I'm just switching out the commander. And here I have Ayachino. Uh, at the end of the video, you will see a little clip of um, a match with Ravel with the um, Regia Marina camo. And you're going to see, um, well, you're going to see a close quarters expert medal where we take out, I believe it's a cruiser at kind of long range. I think it's uh, right around seven kilometers, right? The edge of uh, the range that you would have for Ayachino. So with Ravel, you went out to 10 kilometers secondary range and we basically um, overwhelm the cruiser there at the end of uh, a, a recent match and yeah so i did have a lot of wins in the christopher columbus where i would get uh, you know a couple thousand xp but i kind of thought that this match highlighted uh, a lot of the qualities about the ship especially with the accuracy build here so that's why we're going to go ahead and show this uh, we do some uh, kind of uh, unique i think evasion of incoming torpedoes from a shimikaze which would certainly have wiped us out but 
yeah, we're going to see that in a little bit. But here, I've got three ships that I'm uh, sort of targeting here. There is a Des Moines that looks like he is uh, trying to stay behind an island, but now he's going to go broadside. So this is awesome. Here, within three and a half minutes, we're up to 47,000 damage. So here with the accuracy build of the Christopher Columbus, you can definitely dish out the damage big time and you don't really need the uh, seconders. Look at the uh, grouping of those shells there. That is awesome. Get a Citadel hit on only four main gun hits out of the 16. So 25% of the main guns got a hit. And yeah, so we're up to 66,000 damage already. And this is awesome. Uh, you can see the blue team is kind of faltering and it doesn't look like we are gonna win the match. But um, yeah, the game here, uh, from my point of view with the Christopher Columbus was an outstanding match with the ship itself. And as I said, I think this does kind of show, uh, showcase the firepower uh, that the Christopher Columbus has if they, uh, if the blue, uh, if, excuse me, if the red team goes out and lets the Christopher Columbus do its thing, they will be in a little bit of trouble. They will at least have their hands full. So here is a broadside Yamato, and that is always something that an opposing battleship wants to see. It looks like he's turning out a little bit. Uh, he did start two fires, and there is some excellent grouping again. So this is awesome. And all right, so we didn't get any Citadel hits because he was moving out but we still did get a fair amount of hits there it looked like six or seven hits we're up to 90,000 damage already and that is within the first five minutes of the match here come some torpedoes and we are maneuverable enough to get out of the way of most of them and there you can see that one torpedo did inflict 12,000 damage so you're going to see something similar to that uh, coming up here in a little bit in whatever that uh, destroyer is I do believe that is a Shimakaze so 12,000 damage was kind of lightweight as far as uh, what it could have done it could have doubled that easily so there is a Gusape Verdi 19 kilometers away and that is the thing in a standard match with the Christopher Columbus is you want to have um, well you want to have as much range as you can of your main guns because uh, you got to get within a certain distance to activate the secondaries and whenever you purposely go into a standard match and try to get the secondaries going you just put yourself at risk and get chewed up by the red team for the most part unless you have extremely long-range secondary guns and uh, in my port the ship that has the uh, greatest secondary range I think is the Atlantico um, pan-european uh, or no, the um, Atlantic, uh, transatlantic, I, I forget what it is, it's not pan-European, it's the other one, uh, but that is um, 12, over 12 kilometers secondary range. So here's a Shimakaze that I was talking about earlier, and we are in the smoke, he cannot see us, and we're just nailing him with these the secondaries, and we do have the enhanced secondary targeting going. So, yeah, so that is the Shimakaze there. I think you're going to see some torpedoes show up in the slot right here, right behind us. And, um, yeah, the, there you go. Yeah, so this definitely does not look good. And the best defense for torpedoes like this is to simply move away from them as quick as possible. And if anyone has seen the uh, original Star Trek episode, uh, Balance of Terror where the uh, Romulan uh, death ray is fired at the Enterprise and they warp out uh, away from it as quick as possible and the beam just disperses and uh, causes minimum damage. There's a Citadel hit on the Worcester. This is what that uh, torpedo strike reminded me of is we moved out of the way enough to where the range of those torpedoes uh, just uh, petered out and so we evaded uh, certain doom right there. So now we're up to 120,000 damage. And uh, the, the, even at that, the red team has not been scratched. Look at that. They have all the bases. And uh, yeah, we don't have many points left, even though we have four ships left. 
Uh, two more Citadel hits there. We took out the Wooster. And uh, yeah, we're up to 140,000 damage. Uh, four Citadel hits, only six secondaries. And yeah, that uh, Shimakaze was not in range long enough to really do anything about that. And this is at the Gisape Verdi, which was down in health uh, earlier in the match. I think if you go back and check that out, he was way down and I guess he had a couple heal boosters going and he was able to recover. But if he has uh, Ayachino like I have, I, I think we started out with five heals, uh, consumables, uh, at least four. So there's another shot on the Gisape Verdi and we do get the high caliber medal on that. 148,000 damage. There's a Minotaur. It looks like that thing should be uh, easy prey because he's out in the open water. I hit the smoke. And we will just... Uh, he disappeared. So there you go. That is uh, not good. So uh, three ships on the blue team versus seven ships on the red team. Uh... 35 points to go. Uh, okay, so a uh, ship just got taken out. So it's about 70 points to go and we lose the match. So like I said, we're definitely going to lose this match. But I think this kind of showcases the um, pretty decent firepower, unbelievable firepower of the uh, Christopher Columbus. And if you do the secondary build and can get within range with the semi-armor piercing secondaries, you will just chew up the red team. But... You have to get in the right circumstance to make that happen. All right, there's that Giuseppe Verdi again. That guy just will not go away. And he is healed almost uh, half his health right there. So, and that's the end of the match. So we timed out. And I believe we did get a Dreadnought medal there at the end. All right, 270,000 credits, 148,000 damage. Uh, battle performance total damage on 58 main gun hits. That's pretty good for a battleship. Destroyed ship, four citadels, a defended, a uh, few target hits. But we did get the Dreadnought, the high caliber, and the unsinkable metal. So that is, uh, that is awesome. Let's see how we did on the team result. Well, first place on the uh, blue team there. And we did get the, the higher number of medals. Uh, out of anybody in the match so had we have won that match we would have had a great score i think so all right well there you go that's it for my first look at the christopher columbus as you can see it has awesome firepower with the main guns and uh secondaries will definitely chew up the uh opposing uh red team ships if they get close enough and you get to use them so be checking that out at the end of the video here after the the closeout and as always let me know what you think down below this is the jaguar and i'll see you on the high seas thanks for watching hit subscribe if you like it